Mr. Roy, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, uh, when we set out to do uh, our first podcast for 2024, Alex and I were uh, talking about different guests we wanted, and I wanted to lead with you. And the reason I wanted to lead with you is that, uh, number one, I want people to understand uh, what role the chamber plays, and specifically uh, the the Monroe Chamber of Commerce, which I know that you guys work really well together with the West Monroe Chamber. We do. But for today, we're going to focus on the Monroe Chamber of Commerce. And uh, if you could start off, Roy, just kind of give us just a little bit of your background and when you start with the chamber and what the chamber is. Okay. So m my background is I'm almost 40 years in newspapers. And like all things news, newspapers, I, my career ended abruptly. And I spent three years in the United Way system. Um, and, and we were in Wichita, Kansas. But I told everybody, I said, Janet Durden has the best United Way ever in the whole world. And I still believe that. I believe that in my heart. So anyway, um, the door opened up. My, my last couple roles in the newspaper was president and publisher. President and publisher of a newspaper has a couple different things they do, different hats they wear. One of those is kind of a community cheerleader and community advocate. Well, that really prepared me for the job at the Monroe Chamber of Commerce. Um, my predecessor, Sue Nicholson, had done a fantastic job. I knew Sue forever. I called her the Vince Lombardi of, of, of Chambers. And I, I said, I, I don't want to be Phil Bankston who replaced Vince Lombardi. You know, right. I, I, so, um, but so I felt prepared when I interviewed coming in. We we moved here in late um, 1991, and our kids were six, four, and two. After two years here, Gannett, the, our, the parent company of the New Star, came back and wanted to move us. And they had told us they would do that. And we said, no, we, we don't want to move. We love this community. This is where we want to raise our kids. I still have two of my children here. They All three graduated from Neville. Two of them went to ULM. One went to LSU. Um, we absolutely love this community. So the career opportunities opened up. We moved back to Tennessee. We moved to Wichita. And um, uh, the, the chamber job began opened up. And so I threw my hat in the ring and, and God opened the door for us to move back. So I think one of your questions, what does the chamber do? Was yeah. is that so we're a business advocacy organization. Um, but that takes on a lot of what what does that mean? Our mission statement is to create an environment where local businesses thrive. And so we've decided that 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 takes on many different avenues our goal, again, is to make this business community thrive. And so when I came here, when I began to interview, um, I, I felt that um, there was an apathy here a little bit. And, mm -hmm. and I think uh, John Ray talks about that garage door mentality. Sure. Uh, the mayor talks about changing hearts and mouths. And I, I sense that we would come back and visit, you know, our family here. And so when I interviewed, I felt it's important that People need to love their community. If they if they wake up every day, I use the phrase, it's a beautiful day in Monroe, West Monroe, Washtenaw Parish, Northeast Louisiana. If people believe that, I think our businesses will thrive. And so we've set out with that as our mission it is, is to create the environment where local businesses thrive. But we're going to be – you're not going to find – I told the search committee, you won't find anybody – um, who loves this community more, and I there won't be a day that I don't remind people how great it is to live here. Right. So, and and I can really appreciate that. <clears throat> so, you've been uh, in this role um, about three years. Is that correct? Almost two and a half. So two, two, and, yeah. two, two and a half years. Um, anytime we we have uh, when change occurs, uh, especially at top level change, there's an opportunity to uh, revisit everything. Revisit. Uh, uh, the makeup of our boards, how they operate, the programs that we have, what's working, what's not working, what can we make a little better by tweaking. So you had the opportunity of coming in and uh, with a fresh set of eyes and looking at uh, the chamber in our business community and our just overall community as a whole. What was the first thing that you wanted to implement Um that uh, set you guys on the, which I'm just going to call it a success path that you've put us on because uh, end of the day, it's perception in a lot of cases equals reality. If you, if you give people hope, hope can be the catalyst for change. No. So, and we, we feel that we've seen that through um, this uh, renewed energy coming from the chamber and we've seen it branch out in a lot of different areas. So kind of give us just a, um, a thousand foot view of what was the first area that you wanted to tackle when you came in? Um, man, 
Uh, you know, it was funny. That's a great question. When, when the, I was interviewed, the last interview, it was all Zoom interviews. And, and after I saw the mayor's first state of the city, it was on Easter morning of, of 21, uh, 831 that morning, my daughter called me and said, Dad, you, you, I love Monroe. You got to move back. And I said, Emma, I'm trying the next week. I think I literally got on my knees in the Zoom interview. But when they brought me in, uh, for the final interview, uh, it was I said there were some other candidates and they had brought me in and they wanted youth and they wanted energy. I, kn I know they did. And um, I, I'm I, there's not going to be anybody that out energizes me because that's just my and, system. And I'll how, agree with that. <laughs> that's how God made me. But when I came in, they, they called back and said, oh, by the way, we want you to do like a 20 slide PowerPoint on what you're going to do your first 90 days. And I thought, oh, my, I. I'm going to listen, and, which is hard for me to do, but I'm going to meet people and I'm going to listen. I'm going to try to learn. And how do you put that in a 20 point, you know, 20 slides of PowerPoint? Right. Um, it, but that's what I, that's what I did. I came in and I began to listen to people and I began to see one of the things. And I credit John Landry, who was the current chair, and I credit Tanya Hilburn, who was the incoming chair. We met a lot and we talked a lot and, and we decided that we wanted to energize the board as best we can. Um, we wanted to diversify our board the best we can. And diversity, you know, diversity is more than race. It's mm -hmm. it's age, it's gender, it's all those different things. We wanted to bring people who were willing to get their hands dirty, at, you know, and try to grow this community. So at our retreat at the end of 21, uh, Tanya Hilburn, who was our incoming chair, she kind of laid a challenge down. We had we had our current board there, and then our incoming board people. And she said, "We we need everybody working. What are we? We want you. If you're going to serve on this board, we want you serving on committees. We want you engaged. We want you involved. We need your input." And so that retreat in November of 21, we came up with ten committees or, or areas that we wanted to focus on. And and from there, it's just been, we've been rocking and rolling ever since there. And I will, I, I want to say something too, if I could, Brian, one of the things that I found most engaging here is I went to the Young Professionals Lunch, and one of the first things I did when I got here, we have an energized emerging young professional, whatever you want to call this group of people, these folks are on fire for this community. And and I've only, you know, I come in and say it's a beautiful day, and I talk about the great things here, and, and I've just kind of directed people's focus. Everybody knew it. Everybody knew this is a great place. Mm -hmm. We wanted to celebrate ourselves. We wanted to own our story. I came from an industry, newspapers, where we let people position us. And, yeah. and we're not going to let people position this market. And mm -hmm. our young folks, man, they're energized. They're excited about this market. And, you know, I, I think you bring up a very great point. And sometimes in uh, management as a whole, we look at our strength of being the uh, – the, the steady, the, the, the people who have been here the longest, who may be our most influential people that, that get things done. And we leave out that young, energetic part that's out there that's gonna, that is our future. And there's a lot that they have to offer um, into the growth of any community. But if we don't have a leader that can focus someone down a path, um, all the energy in the world is not going to end up in the right direction. You know, leadership is – you are so right on, on both points. Our, our young folks, we believe at the chamber – I believe that our strength is our diversity. Yep. When, you know, there's there's three of us in this room right now and we all come from different backgrounds and we get together and we're able to pull that strength our strengths together, we grow further. That's how we look at diversity and and this is a diverse community and it's so great. But the other thing you mentioned leadership, we have got some really great leaders in this community right now, and they all seem to come in. You know, you got you got Mayor Ellis, you got Mayor Mitchell, you got Shane Smiley, yep. um, you've got Dr. Barry, you got Dr. Esters, you got Dean Sanders at, at VCOM, and all of these people are collaborating and working together. Then you have people like Amanda Edge over at Entergy, and right. you have others like that. Who, and and everybody has one goal, and it's to grow this community and and to grow it the right way. And so, how can you not be excited about that? How can you not get up every morning just say, man, man, I love living here. You know, uh, <clears throat> over the past few years, I would I would go back, if, you know, being total transparency. It's probably been a, a little over a year that I decided to get fully engaged in our community. Um, 
I would like to think that I've been engaged on some level for many years, but actually throwing my hat in the ring that says, I want to be part of change and I want to help facilitate those things. And what I found is that we have a lot of people that are willing. They just don't quite understand what they can do to, yep. for, for their role to make it happen. But the one thing that I've seen more than anything is that when our community uh, has a success, that everybody is celebrating that success. What happens on the east side of the river affects what happens on the west side of the river, north of the interstate and south of the interstate. We're all one community. And when that community is working together to see the different elements grow, everybody wins at that point. And I think now for the first time in many years, our community and the leadership within our community recognize that and seeing them work together has inspired me to want to get involved because change is happening and uh, all it takes is that next great idea or that next person to come in to say, yes, I'm going to support it too, because that one's going to equal two, which is going three, and it just multiplies from there. So when, when you talk about setting up the board that uh, I think it's important for people to understand that you have a small staff of employees with the, with the chamber. But if it was not for the committees committees and the board, we wouldn't be where we're at. You guys can't do it alone. We have to have the community on board. We have to have the business community willing to help support things. So talk to me about some of the different com uh, committees that you have sure. within the chamber and how they work together to help achieve this goal. Absolutely. Thank you. And I want to, I want to, mm -hmm. uh, before I get to our committees, I want to compliment and commend you because you saw a void and you jumped in and you are bringing positive stories to our, our community every single day week probably. And and it's just really great. And it's good to see what you're doing. And it's good to see you excited about our community and moving us forward. And, and again, I'll go back to it before I get to the committee. I just want to say one more time, we are our story yeah. and, and you've become one of our storytellers. And, and that's a pretty cool thing because we don't want others telling our stories. And, 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 and People tend to do that. They'll, yeah. they'll tend to take. And, and when people come in, we had uh, a group of site selectors come in two years ago. And they came in, I think, with a predetermined idea of who this community was. And they were here for three days. And, and that group that came in and the group that left were totally different people. Yeah. They, they fell in love with us <laughs> in just three days. And, and th so thanks to you, because you are helping people fall in love with our community. You want to know why I started that? So before you answer that other question, uh, we, would, we have companies that will relocate people in from, mm -hmm. from time to time. And it's not as much as what we used to have in the past, but it still happens. And we've always kind of struggled with that trailing spouse and being right. able to find um, – um, whether they're trying to find employment or whether they're trying to integrate within our community. And uh, too many times I hear people say, well, it's just, you know, you don't have anything to offer me. Well, I beg to differ. We have everything <laughs> that a big community has. You may have to look a little bit harder. We may not have as many options, but from the arts to, to different entertainment options to recreational activities to uh, education, we have everything here we just don't tell our story like we should. So that's one of the reasons we wanted to kind of start. Thank you. This is just to yeah. kind of tell a story and thank you for, for recognizing. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, it, it, if you look at our assets, what, you know, you mentioned the arts and, and to me, the arts are very critical and we hope we form, you mentioned our committees and I'll talk about that in just a second. We're going to form a committee um, on the arts and, and because if you if you ever gone to Strauss Theater and you've gone to one of their performances, you're blown away. I mean, absolutely, the wedding singer they could have lifted that cast up and everybody involved with that and dropped them on Broadway. That's the quality of show that was. Judy Bennett is and Debbie Sawyer are re-energizing our symphony. We got two great ballets. Right. The kids' theater over over at the Strauss. Is My daughter's and, participating in that. It's amazing, and, and to give our youth that opportunity. Yeah. Well, then jump over to the Children's Museum, go to the zoo, go out to Black Bayou. You. My, my family was at Black Bayou on Saturday. I mean, there's just so many things yeah. here that, that sometimes we take for granted or we don't recognize. And then our greatest assets, University of Louisiana at Monroe. Absolutely. And, and where they're going and, and the leadership that Dr. Berry and you, you and I talked about this at lunch one time. How many universities have a mission that is to eradicate poverty yeah. in your area? I Blown mean, away when I heard that. It, it, 
thought, wow, it almost brings you to tears to think. And and Dr. Berry lives that. They all live that out there. And, and, and you know, you look at, at the bridge over the Bayou book and the Centennial Scholars and, oh, it just, it, it just gives you goosebumps about here. So to that end, we tried to look at different areas from that first retreat. So we came up, we had a governmental group mm-hmm. and that they still meet under Paul Hutchison and, and they, we, we will, um, we focus if, if there's a taxing issue, we don't endorse political candidates, right. but we interview, we interviewed the mayor, we interview Shane Smiley, we, we talk to different people, we talk to school board people. Um, and so they're actively engaged and involved in the community. Um, we also have, we formed a technology committee because we felt if our small businesses in particular needed help with, with small or with technology, two things have come out of that committee. One of those is we've done two cybersecurity um, summits. And cybersecurity, a lot of people think, well, I just got this app or this software and I'm covered. Right. You're not. Right. And, and it's a big deal. And so to be able to bring in experts from across this whole region and help our small businesses with cybersecurity was a big deal. The other thing is social media. We had surveyed our membership, cybersecurity and social media. So last last year we had a social, we actually had three social media workshops for small businesses and things like that. The other group that falls under Paul's, so we put technology, government, and nonprofit together, and they fall under Paul. Uh, John Jones leads our technology group okay. um, along with Paul, and then Kirsten Gladden with Catholic Charities, who's a board member, heads our nonprofits. And, and so you think, why does a business advocacy group want to get involved with nonprofits? Our thinking was if we can help our nonprofits, and we just had a grant writing workshop in December, um, Dr. Hersey and Dr. Carpenter, and it was great. Um, but if we can help our nonprofits, if we can help them help our community, help those in need our community, right. it's going to help our business communities. Plus, it speaks to who we are. It speaks to our DNA. This is sure. the most caring, giving community I've ever seen. And so we wanted the chamber involved with that. Two other areas, we got workforce and we got education. Um, Wendy Tostison, Dr. Tostison out at LDCC, um, heads those groups. Maggie Generoso with Monroe City Schools is over education. Uh, Wendy works with Matt Dickerson at Pulp Mill Services and workforce. Workforce is probably our most critical issue in this region. Um, when Matt went to work for Pulp Mill Services, Justin and Ronnie Marsh, who are wonderful people, called us over and said, would you guys be willing as a business community to invest in workforce? We're willing to share Matt Dickerson with the community. And so we did. And, and so we we contracted Matt. Um, we worked with the Pulp Mill Services to do it. We uh, Matt's very active in Nelamac, which is the Northeast Louisiana Manufacturing Alliance and Consortium. Which really, that so if I can yeah. pause no, you yeah. on that real quick. This podcast is possible because of your support of our real estate business. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, I'm confident we have the tools and the processes to help you reach your real estate goal. For more information or to reach out to us, check out the podcast description for our contact info. Is what, in in my opinion, so so Neela Mack is outside of the chamber, but is that correct? Yes. But obviously the chamber supports what Neela Mack is doing. And and Neela Mack, if I understand it correctly, is a group of local manufacturers Mm -hmm. that, that is saying, hey, we need a workforce. We we're we're trying to compete for the same people in a lot of cases coming and we're pulling from one another, but why don't we just pull our resource to figure out how we can develop workforce better for our area so that we can all thrive and grow. So that's, in my opinion, taking business that says, look, we're, we're not here trying to, although we're competing, we want to work together as a unit to make our community stronger. And to listen to, to Matt talk about the need, the need for high paying, for employees with high paying jobs, if we just have the right skills trained, uh, just the, how great that need is for our area just kind of really blew me away. I want to say one number I heard, and I may be misquoting, so if I am, correct me. You know, 150 to 200 jobs over the next several years could be needed in in all of these companies if we had the right workforce. Oh, it's the and, numbers. And that's, an, that's an industry. That's yeah. a that's a company moving in yeah. here. That that number is actually higher. It's it's wow. multiple companies moving in here of what we're going to need. There's there's companies that can add sales tomorrow if they had the right workforce. And wow. so Neelamac said not only workforce but all areas. We make some really cool things here, and if one of us benefits, we all can benefit. But we need to do it together. And so you look. 
look and, and you look, you know, you got Ingersoll, uh, Ingersoll Rand, Mid-South Extrusion, Berry Global, James Machine Work. You got all these cool companies making some really cool things here. And so they're just po pooling their resources together to say, hey, made in Monroe, made in Northeast Louisiana, right. we're going to grow it together and we're, and we're going to work on workforce. And, and I got to – Louisiana Delta Community College and ULM both are – so on board with our workforce. Delta, Louisiana Delta Community College under Dr. Esters and Dr. Tostison and John Garrison and Nathan Hall and people, they have such a accommodating um, uh, attitude toward business. I mean, the, the, the things they did with Etheridge Pipeline um, in forming some non-accredited five-week courses to get them trained employees out wow. in the field. I mean, it's amazing, but that goes back to the collaboration and that goes back to leadership here. But you're right. There is tons of opportunity. We And, you know, the cool thing about it is if we can get people in in, in livable and growing wages that are from here, this is home. The, yeah. the, it, it You know, you talked about trailing spouses and stuff. We have people here that we can grow from right yeah. here. And so that's when – and then – the other side of that, and this is one of the cool things that Matt's been able to do because he spent eight years in, in, in uh, K through 12. And so now through Matt's efforts, we've got everybody. We've got workforce, we've got higher ed, and we've got K through 12 at the table saying, okay, we all have challenges, but how can we work together? Because at the end of the day, we want kids graduating from high school, either going to one of the two schools or getting jobs here. And and uh, the other thing Neela Mack's doing is it's it's knocking down perceptions of a CTE career yeah and that's that has been needed here for quite some yeah. time um and i don't think it's uh, our community is uh so unique that other communities are def desperately needing a change in k through 12 right. uh to make sure that we have kids that are leaving that are on a career path absolutely not on an education path uh, per se that it's mandatory you got to go to a four-year college uh, four-year college is not meant for everybody. And uh, I think it's great that Dr. Barry even understands sure. that and that uh, he's even behind supporting getting our K-12 through and having a system that is workable so that we have kids that are workforce trained or on a path to get workforce trained. So if four-year college is not right for them, what does Delta have to offer? What can we start working within K-12 through to have our kids um, or now young adults prepare for the workforce. Absolutely. And then, you know, you, you mentioned Dr. Bering, you mentioned ULM, but, you know, probably the best school of construction in the world over there. And and, and how do we keep those folks gr from graduating and going to Houston or Dallas, right. but we keep them right here? And then what Dr. McCann and Kathy over at the School of Business is doing with the Pelican Cup, you talk about oh, a man. cool entrepreneurial thing going on right now, which is now statewide. And and the the winning money is is twenty five thousand, but there's a pool of like two hundred thousand that that the winning teams can use if they want to start that business. I've been to the last two that they have. I think they've only had two. Right. Uh, I've been to each one of them, and to see the level that these young adults, these kids, are bringing Woo. to the table of um, just innovation and just kind of thinking through the process. I mean, it's inspiring. And I think it's inspiring for our youth to be able to see that it is possible. You can do this. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so um, education, I mentioned Maggie Generoso. A couple of things we've done on education is this is a small thing, but but we think it's a big thing. We noticed that ULM and Delta had put banners up around town. And so we went to ULM and Delta. We went to Monroe City Schools and we went to a couple others. And we pulled our resources together and we put banners up at all Monroe City Schools. One side is uh, Roy Schelling. The other side is Louisiana Delta or ULM. We got 10 at each school. One of the reasons that we did that was we wanted kids coming out of that school every day saying, hey, I got some, there's, there's my school up there. I got some community pride. But then on the flip side, they see Delta or they see ULM and say, I got a pathway. You know, I, I, I can go from this school to this school to this school and I can go either here and I can stay right here and do it. And so that was one of the things we did. We relaunched our adopt a school program. Last year, we brought Dr. Brumley in and hosted him for lunch and had a lot of our educators there. We celebrate our teachers of the year. Um, the other, some other committees, we, we have a membership committee, a small business committee, and diversity committee under Jasmine McConnell. And Jasmine is Cajun title and she's very active in the community. Our membership, we, we, had about 200 volunteers help us and a company called Your Chamber Connection came in a year ago about now. And we we uh, signed 
um, 363 new or upgraded memberships with those 200 volunteers. Wow. Again, most of them, I didn't know a lot of the volunteers. They were these young people wanting to get engaged. They believed in the chamber. They believed in this community. So that was a pretty cool thing. And that kept us hopping, and that's kept us hopping most of the year. We actually did 75 ribbon cuttings last year which was up about 30 from the previous year. And if you notice, if you ever look, go to our Facebook page and look when we do a ribbon cutting, we always take two pictures. We do the chamber smile picture where we cut the ribbon, and then we always do a celebration picture. And and people just love to celebrate. They love to celebrate their business in this community. And so that, that's been fun too. Diversity. Uh, Darian Atkins out at Louisiana Delta Community College um, actually did three, we did three lunches thanks to Chase uh, who funded us uh, with this effort. We did three diversity luncheons. We did one on diversity, one on equity, equity, and one on inclusion. And we had about 50 people at each lunch, and they were really, really good. Darian did a knocked a home run with with those jobs. Yeah, I attended one of those, and I will agree he he did he did really yeah. really good job with that. It, and, so, and then we've got um, uh, just uh, before I forget because I, I everything runs together, but we've got um, a healthcare. Com- a com- committee and we've got a finance committee. We we felt it really important that we have someone oversee our books sure. from the outside, look at our financials each month and that type of thing. And then Colby Walker over at Intermountain. Intermountain is one of these companies that's headquartered here. They're they're really, I mean, it, it's an amazing company. And, and not many people know what they do. Th- they don't. They say, what's that ski lodge over on Tower Drive? Well, you know, they manage hotels and they own hotels and they manage hotels and they renovate. Colby runs the renovation uh, area. And so Colby's on our board and she came to me at the end of 22 and said, uh, she said, Mr. Roy, I really, I got, a, I got a passion for this community. I moved back. I lived in Dallas. I lived in Los Angeles. I grew up here, but I, I moved back and I love this community. She said, I want to form a committee called Community Engagement. Wow. And so we did. And, and so, um, in fact, today we just signed off. We've got about 11 videos we're going to produce about this community. And, and uh, Colby has kind of headed up a committee uh, that we supported. Uh, Discover Monroe, West Monroe did a restaurant week in September. We supported that through community engagement. And, and we're looking at, again, we've got a retreat coming up, but we're looking at ULM. We're looking at the arts. Another group that we've met with off and on that I think is probably one of the most critical groups here in town is our pastors. This is a Mm. strong faith-based community, and our pastors touch so many lives, uh, whether you're employed, unemployed, whether whatever it might be. And so Pastor Ike Bird at Mount Zion is on our board, and um, we're going to try to work with him. He's, He's had us, we've hosted a couple meetings. Um, They host, uh, Ike host a, uh, a prayer group mm-hmm. every Thursday. A and lot of pastors from around the area, from what I understand, attend that. Attend that. And so how do we engage them more? How do we, you know, we're not separated. We're all one. And well, so how do we engage them? But you talk about ap- apathy being an issue within our community. And, and it's gotten better, but it's not fixed. No. And, and I think uh, mobilizing our faith-based community um, just to help us with the words that we speak. Yeah. Um, if that's the one thing that they could do, that could that could change the momentum in a lot of different areas. It can. And people people need to be aware and they need to be sensitive about social media and things they say, the words. You mentioned the words. The the words they use are are critical. And and who do you say those words to? And on social media, a lot of times we feel the safety of just knocking something out on our keyboard and words can be hurtful or they can be helpful. And, and we own our stories. And I tell people all the yeah. time, use social media to celebrate us and celebrate yourselves, celebrate your families, but celebrate this community, celebrate our schools, celebrate your business. And, and you never know, and, and I've learned this, you never know who's looking. And you never know who's looking at your website, at my website, who's going to view this podcast. Um, and, and when they start looking through social media, are people – proud of their community or they are they dog in their community and stuff and so hopefully in our area they're beginning to see a lot more people being very proud about this community well you've got a choice every day when you wake up that you can look at something uh, through a positive lens or through a negative lens and i know that there's uh, like many communities there's uh, things that we're not proud of that happen within our community but when you weigh you you put that on a scale 
I, I mean, I would go up against anybody to say that positive stuff that's within our community far outweighs any of that negative stuff. And that negative stuff that we have is not great, and I wish that we could wipe it out. But I don't know that there's a solution to wipe out all negativity for, from right. the community. If somebody's got that plan, I'd love to talk with them <laughs> because I'd like to go off that plan with them. But for those people that that feel like there's nothing good in our community to offer, reach out to me. Reach out to Roy. Yeah. Let me let me show you the community that I know and love. Absolutely. Um, and what's available. Say there's nothing to do in our town. Reach out to me. Spend a day or half a day with me or a couple of hours. And let me show you the great things our community has to offer. And I think that you're right when it comes to. Uh, what you say, it really matters. I mean, it really matters on uh, the growth, uh, the decision of someone wanting to invest millions of dollars in our community because of the attitude that we have. Uh, I, I want to circle back around to one thing that, you know, in a discussion that we had previous, it really, um, uh, it in, it inspired, inspired is probably not the right word, it gave me hope that we are on a continuous path of growth. You had, what was it, the, uh, the, the, uh, the 20 under 40, mm -hmm. um, is that what it's called? 20 under 40? Top 20 under 40. Yeah. Yes. So y'all had that, um, uh, awards that, that came out and, uh, tell me about the number of nominations <laughs> that, that happened, which was, I think far more than we probably ever had, but then the attendance that it, we had. It, it was involved. great. It, it, so th we, 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 we do this every year. And this year we had 88 nominations. Last year we had 63. And eight, think about our market for a minute. And you have 88 people under 40 years old that are engaged in this community that were nominated and recognized by somebody to be nominated. And and so we 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 really wrestled with how do you choose 20? And when you start reading the accomplishments of these young people at their ages, you're you're kind of blown away. And and so we decided, no, we're gonna keep it at 20. And so we had a committee come in and we and we picked 20. And our fear was it, it word kind of gets out that that someone got picked. And, you know, we're, our fear was that people weren't going to come. Right. And, and, and we had probably 80 of the nominees at, at that. And the eight that didn't come um, had other conflicts and stuff like that. And the fact that we had 80 and I got to tell you. You know, I've done events here for two and a half years, and and man, we've had some energized events. That night was probably one of the most energized I've ever been at. It, wow. the, the 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 feeling in that room, and and as and we we bring everybody up and call them out. If you're a nominee, we say a little thing about we and we give you a little thing, and then we bring up the top twenty. It was it was crazy. The excitement, and, and I think if if you look in in this month's Bayou Life, you'll see a picture of all eighty nominees. We're going to run it again because they're celebrating. They're just pumping their fists and they're just so excited. And and when you look at that group, and I watched them all come up, and I watched their celebration pictures, and I'm thinking, oh man, our future is bright. I mean, these young folks are just so excited about living here and about yeah. living life and doing things here and growing this community. It was, it was really fun. And I'll go back to something you said when you wake up in the morning. I tell people sometimes, and I believe this, I believe when people come and they engage us and they get to know us and everything like that, and they have to go back home, I think like those site selectors, when they went back home, I think they look in the mirror in the morning and they say, man, I wish I lived in Monroe or West Monroe or Washington Parish. I, I, I really think there's a jealousy that, you know, people are really wanting to live here. And, you know, we haven't even talked about a lot of the projects that are, are, are happening or are going to be happening here. If I mean, if what we have doesn't get you excited, just look at our future. It, I mean, it's like a bright energy star. So we are for the first time in many, many years um, in our community. So our community has suffered losses. Uh, we've had um, a State Farm Regional Office pulled out of here, I don't know, 20 plus years ago. Uh, CenturyLink, which turned into a lot of different names, into Lumen. Um, I think they're on paper still headquarters here, but mm -hmm. we all know that they they pulled out of here. They donated the facility to uh, ULM, and I can't wait to see what ULM is going to do with that place. Um, so we, we've had those things that, that have happened, those little punch in the gut. But for the first time in a long time, we are positioned in a in a spot in our community. And if, if those that are hearing this right now don't understand it, come spend some time with me or Roy. Yeah. We are positioned to have some amazing things happen in the next few years. You know, we just had the announcement 
of uh, Amazon. Right. But I know that there's other things that are in the work. We've got the uh, grand opening that's going to happen for the uh, sports complex in West Monroe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're not, if you don't understand what the economic engine is going to be for that thing, spend some time with the convention bureau because they're going to tell you that yep. that is a that is a income producing for our area. With uh, we, we've even got an Olympic qualifying event that's going to happen there, and we haven't even really opened the doors fully. So we've got a lot of fantastic things that are happening in our area, and it's got me excited. Yeah, I, I just uh, I know the next five years. If we stay the path that we're at, if people want to get engaged, the future is bright here. It's extremely bright. And that sportsplex in West Monroe um, is going to benefit the entire region. Absolutely. We have, we haven't even talked about how great our restaurants are here. And those restaurants are going to have a lot of people coming to them based on what the folks that get brought into, to that facility. You know, the Children's Museum is going to move from a 10,000 square foot building to a new state of the art 20,000 square foot building over at Forsyth Park. And then that opens up that whole candy company area down there. 100. So my family and I, we actually schedule vacations around going to areas that have really nice children's mm-hmm. museums. Yep. So um, for us to be naive to the fact that, oh, well, it's just a children's museum, that's an economic engine that's going to be um, um, in place for our area, which is going to yeah. it's going to improve um, housing. Right. Uh, it's going to improve um, just quality of life all the way around. When we have more money, uh, we have more things to be able to offer. Absolutely. Now, from the standpoint of... Uh, you and I both know that engagement is key if you want to receive benefit. So uh, being a member of the chamber brings benefits, but an engaged member of the chamber brings massive benefits. So for that company, that small business that is just paying their annual dues but is not plugged in, what would you say to them? I would say first thank you because, you know, the small business is the backbone of, of any chamber of commerce meeting. And reach out to us and let's talk about how we can work together to grow your business, but also grow the community. A lot of times those small businesses, they don't have the staff to do some of the things that we can do. We can help them. We can help find resources for them. But we also want them engaged. We want them, if they can serve on one of the committees, great. If they can, if they can be part of one of our, you know, whatever it might be, reach out to us. And, and but at the end of the day, if you just stay successful as a business and you grow your business and you focus on your business, you've helped the chamber because you've helped this community. All right. So uh, what is uh, – describe to us what Coffees and Conversation is. Coffee and Conversation, we'll have it tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. And it is just a um, – it's taken on kind of a, a different life each each session, but it's a networking event. We, we started it um, – you know, I, I spend a lot of time in coffee shops – in the morning, uh, and our sponsor of Coffee and Conversation is CeCe's, and I go in there quite a bit. If you go into a coffee shop, you meet a lot of people and you network with a lot of people. And so we decided we'd create Coffee and Conversations, and CC sponsors us. We bring in coffee. We bring in food. And it takes on a variety of things. Sometimes Mayor Ellis comes and shares updates on the city. Um, sometimes we play Jeopardy. We, we've created a Monroe Jeopardy game, and one time we just did Monroe Jeopardy. A couple months later, we did uh, Museum Jeopardy, uh, where we had Nell Calloway from Schnault mm-hmm. and, and Ralph from the Biedenhorn, Ralph Calhoun, Melissa Say, and they all came in, and we just had questions about the different museums here in, in Monroe, and people just had a blast. We have prizes. We team them up, and we we like to have fun and we like to laugh. Higher ed. Lisa Miller suggested we do a higher ed. So we had Wendy and Lisa, Wendy with uh, LDCC and Lisa with ULM. They they helped co-host it. So we did some of that. Then other times we just break off into tables and we just, what's great about our city? What's uh, maybe things we can improve in our city? And we just talked through that. Alberta Green, who's a board member and one of the most great trainers and business consultants there is, um, she actually came in and did how to handle difficult people session. And um, toward the end of it, Mayor Ellis came to that one. And Alberta and Mayor Ellis were in the middle role playing the difficult employee and the manager. And then they swapped. But we had more fun with that type. And so it's just a way that you can learn and meet other people that are in business here. Hopefully, it will grow into a a business relationship that that you end up if you're if you sell insurance maybe you 
found a new client. And, you know, it's it's, it's that type of thing. That's but what it is. But you may find that someone is struggling with the same thing that yes. you're struggling with. And through conversation, maybe uh, there's um, a solution that comes out of it. So being able to network with other businesses is not just about um, getting new business. It's about enhancing the business that you have. Absolutely. It's about enhancing our community, knowing what's available, knowing what's going on, uh, knowing where you need to get involved. Mm-hmm. Um, so the one of the messages I'd like for, to come out of this for our business community and for the general public, number one, we got a fantastic community. Uh, if you don't see it that way, reach out to me and let me show you what <laughs> I see. Uh, the other thing is that uh, the engine that runs that chamber is active involvement. Thank you. To be able to make it happen. Um, you and your staff can't do it alone. Right. You, your staff, and just the board can't do it alone. we got to have active participation. It's our community. Why would we not want to make it uh, what we want it to be at that point? So, Roy, I just, you know, I know you are one person, and I know it's um, not you that is making all of this happen. But it does take a leader to wrangle everybody <laughs> together and to be able to cast a vision and then to, to, to lead from the front. And uh, I appreciate what you're doing in our community. Thank you, Brian. Um, the, uh, the growth is exciting that we're seeing. The communication that you're giving to everybody is exciting to be able to hear. And um, I think we're going to make this a, um, a little bit of a regular thing to where um, when we have updates, I want you to come in here and talk to us. Absolutely. We want this to be a... Um, a platform to be able to share with with the uh, cool things that are going on. And if there's something you want to communicate, let us know, and we'd love to have you back on this. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. And again, I want to say thank you for what you're doing because you are filling a void and you are doing great things. And we, we appreciate you very much. And I'll close um, Lou Gehrig. I love baseball. Lou Gehrig, um, with all due respect to him, he said, today I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. That's Roy Heatherly. Today I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. So thank you for having me. Appreciate it, Roy. Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to watch or listen to this podcast. We really appreciate your involvement please leave us a comment or even better yet, subscribe to this podcast and hit that notification bell so that you can be alerted for every new episode when it hits.